Ear Anatomy and Physiology. In today's video, we will explore the fascinating world of ear anatomy and function. Our ears play a crucial role in our hearing and our ability to maintain balance. So, let's get started. Before delving into the detailed anatomy of the ear, let's first understand its basic divisions. The ear can be divided into three main parts, the outer ear, middle ear, and inner ear. We'll begin with the outer ear, which is the visible part of our ear. It consists of two main components, the pinna and the ear canal. The pinna, also known as the oracle, is the external cartilaginous structure that collects sound waves and directs them into the ear canal. The pinna is the cartilaginous structure that we see on the sides of our head. It has a unique shape and structure that varies from person to person, helping to capture sound waves. The design of the pinna is intended to collect sound waves from the surrounding environment. Its irregular shape and ridges help guide sound waves into the ear canal, amplifying the incoming sound. Once sound waves enter the ear canal, they travel towards the middle ear. The ear canal is a narrow, tube-like structure that connects the outer ear to the middle ear. It is lined with specialized cells and tiny hairs that help protect the ear and keep it clean. The ear canal also serves to amplify sound. It acts as a resonating chamber, enhancing certain frequencies and helping us perceive different sounds more clearly. Additionally, the ear canal produces cerumen, commonly known as earwax. Earwax helps lubricate and protect the delicate structures of the ear, preventing dust, debris, and harmful microorganisms from entering the ear and causing potential damage or infection. It's important to note that the outer ear also assists us in sound vocalization. By capturing sound waves from different directions, the shape and position of the pinna allow us to determine the source and direction of sound. Overall, the outer ear is the first line of defense in our auditory system, responsible for collecting sound waves and directing them into the ear canal towards the middle ear. It also aids in sound amplification and helps us locate sounds in our environment. Once sound waves enter the ear canal, they proceed to the middle ear. The middle ear is a small, air-filled space located between the outer ear and the inner ear. It plays a crucial role in transmitting and amplifying the sound vibrations received from the outer ear to the inner ear. The middle ear contains three tiny bones called ossicles, the malleus, hammer, incus, anvil, and stapes, stirrup. These bones form a chain-like structure, commonly referred to as the ossicular chain. They amplify the sound vibrations received from the eardrum and transmit them to the inner ear. Let's take a closer look at each of the ossicles. The malleus, also known as the hammer, is the first bone in the chain and is attached to the eardrum, which separates the outer ear from the middle ear. When sound waves hit the eardrum, it vibrates, causing the malleus to move. When the malleus vibrates, it passes these vibrations to the incus or anvil, which is the second bone in the chain. The incus, in turn, amplifies the vibrations and transmits them to the stapes. The stapes, or stirrup, is the third bone in the acicular chain, connecting to the inner ear. It acts like a piston, moving back and forth in a small opening, called the oval window, which leads into the inner ear. The movement of the stapes at the oval window generates pressure waves in the inner ear, particularly in the cochlea, which is responsible for our hearing. It's worth mentioning that the middle ear also contains the eustachian tube, which connects the middle ear to the back of the throat. 
The eustachian tube helps equalize the air pressure between the middle ear and the environment, ensuring that the eardrum can vibrate freely. In certain situations, such as during air travel or experiencing changes in altitude, the eustachian tube briefly opens to allow air to enter or exit the middle ear, relieving pressure differences. In summary, the middle ear acts as a bridge connecting the outer ear and the inner ear. It amplifies the sound vibrations received through the ossicles, particularly the malleus, incus, and stapes, from the eardrum. These vibrations are then transmitted to the inner ear, laying the foundation for sound perception. Now, let's talk about the inner ear, which is the most complex and delicate part of the ear. It consists of two main parts, the cochlea and the vestibular system. The cochlea is responsible for our hearing, while the vestibular system helps us maintain balance and spatial orientation. Let's start with the cochlea, a snail-shaped structure in the ear. It is filled with fluid and contains thousands of tiny hair cells called cochlear hair cells. Inside the cochlea, thousands of tiny hair cells are arranged in a spiral structure. When sound vibrations reach the cochlea, these hair cells convert them into electrical signals that our brain can understand. As the sound vibrations reach the cochlea, they cause fluid movement within, leading to bending of the cochlear hair cells. This bending action converts the mechanical energy of sound into electrical signals. The electrical signals generated by the hair cells are then transmitted to the brain through the auditory nerve. Once in the brain, these signals are processed allowing us to perceive and interpret different sounds. Turning to the vestibular system located near the cochlea. It consists of three semicircular canals and two small sacs, called the utricle and saccule. The semicircular canals are responsible for detecting rotational movements of the head. They are filled with fluid and lined with specialized hair cells that respond to changes in the direction and speed of head movement. The information collected by the vestibular system is crucial for maintaining our balance and coordination. It helps us adjust posture, stabilize gaze, and navigate smoothly through the environment. It's important to note that our ears not only allow us to hear sound, but also help us determine the direction of sound. This is because the brain can analyze subtle differences in the time and intensity of sound reaching each ear. That concludes our exploration of ear anatomy and function. Thank you for watching. Thank you.